a former Major League Baseball player who already has played for the Angels, the Miami Marlins, or whatever they're 28 now. Didn't start his academic clock at the college level. So the rule is you don't start your academic clock. You can play. Basically just committed to the University of Arkansas. He was a 2014 four-star receiver. Um, what is your take on this? And I understand there's no real written rule about this um, in college because you, if you don't start your clock, you're academically eligible. There's no, you can't really stop them from trying to play or go play. But is this because the NIL is so lucrative, or is it because is it's a slap in the face to me again? You and I talked to Weddle about this. Uh, we see these private texts. Again, he's taking away high school scholarships. He's taking away JUCO scholarships. It's becoming a mockery. Uh, yesterday, I saw another former basketball player transition and another baseball player as well transition to uh, a scholarship at the four-year level. It, it's becoming a joke. Uh, when, when is the NCAA going to say enough is enough? Well, this is nothing new. I'm, uh, Miami had a guy during uh, the Butch Davis year. His name was Andre King. He played made. Played minor league baseball. I think he was in the Braves organization. I mean, Chris Winkie did it, but yeah, so that's something new. And Andre had originally committed to Michigan, uh, didn't progress in baseball, so he went to college football. Pretty good third receiver, you know. He played with Andre Johnson, uh, but he really played behind Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne. He was actually good enough to get drafted and had a couple of years with the Browns. This could be a way for this guy. Maybe, again, I don't know much about his baseball career. Maybe he's finding out that breaking pitches in Major League or professional baseball are very difficult. The most difficult thing to do in sports is to hit a baseball consistently, okay? Maybe he wants to get uh, some college credits. I don't know what his educational standing is. And maybe he says, you know, athletically, I still have something to give. But I'm just telling you, I've seen a lot of great athletes play baseball who are rated very highly. And they realize early on, even in, in rookie ball, A ball, double A ball, hitting a baseball that changes speeds and changes directions and it comes 90 plus miles per hour. See, that's not athleticism. That is a skill. Mm. And so maybe he just says, you know what? I've done as far much as I could. I got a good signing bonus out of high school. Maybe I'll get some college credits, play some SEC football. But this is nothing new. I don't really have an issue with it. I, I don't I don't I I find it much more uh, damaging when there's an eighth year senior than there is a guy like this. Either way, they're taking a scholarly from someone. Yeah. I I just think that's the problem. Like that's the big problem. Like you're 28. Like what the rigor? I I don't know. I don't see his body holding up. Like you're going against 19, 21 year old corners or safeties that. Uh, that actually have something to prove. I, I don't know. We'll see how but it works. The day, you can't really blame the player, though. At the end of the day, it's the university, the team that's deciding to give them a scholarship. So they're going to be mad at somebody. Be mad at Arkansas for giving them the opportunity. If someone for needing him. Then why are you mad? And also, Arkansas, and I love Sam Pittman. I think he's a real football coach. But, Sam, what are you doing recruiting a wide receiver? I, I, right? again, it's the position. It's like it's not like he's a 28 year old quarterback that's going to come back and help you win one big time natty or something like Chris Winky or Drew Henson, which we've seen before, or even the kid at Oklahoma State. Well, Drew not out of high school though. Drew never did, Drew played with the Yankees system, but Drew was a guy that went from high school to Michigan, and he was right the number one back. Yeah. And I still remember him splitting uh, snaps. He was so highly thought of. Tom Brady, as a senior, has a, was a rotational quarterback in the beginning of the year. They were actually splitting uh, snaps. And, and Lloyd Carr, I think in his own mind, said, okay, Henson's going to pull away here from Brady. And it never happened. And I remember they finally made the decision, we got to go with the veteran. And Brady, I'll never forget, it was his late in his senior year, 1999. They go up to Penn State, had a great defense. They had LeVar Arrington, Courtney Brown, Brandon Short. And Michigan was down by 10 with about seven, eight minutes to go. And Tom Brady did some stuff in that game that should have shown, like, you know what? This guy has a lead a little bit better than we think. He led two late touchdown drives through this corner route. I think it was to Marquise Walker or, or Knight, Marcus Knight. And it was an absolute dime. And I said, you know what? Brady's not bad. He's better than we thought. And then they played in the Orange Bowl against the Sean Alexander-led Alabama, and they won 35-34. Some guy missed an extra point in overtime. But And Brady at the end showed, hey, I'm better than Drew Henson. And 
Drew Henson never developed in either sport because he should have concentrated on one. Mm. After high school, I just think he looked, I don't know if he regrets it or not, but that guy was thought to be a top five baseball and, and football player at the same time. But again, in the era of specialization, it's hard to be Bo Jackson. And, and, and didn't Tennessee with Manning have, what was his name, Helton? Was yeah, they had Todd Helton. Todd Helton, yeah. He I was, was actually at a game where he played. Uh, I was at the 1994 UCLA. season opener. He started he at UCLA, didn't he? No, well, Tennessee had a quarterback by the name of Jerry Colquitt. It was a fifth-year senior. Everybody him. loved him. Yeah. He was this athletic, dual-purpose quarterback, and they ran an option. His first drive of the game, and he blew out his knee. Mm, Sad yeah. story. The guy waits five years. And Todd Helton was the backup quarterback. Yep. The third stringer was Peyton Manning. Yep. I and thought so, I think Peyton was even a fourth stringer, wasn't he? Well, they had a, they had another quarterback. His name was Brandon Stewart. They were top yeah. ten quarterbacks, and Brandon ended up going to A and M. And I'll never forget. So I had I had kind of known who Peyton Manning was because I saw him on a couple of shows. The magazines talked about him. So he was a street uh, Smith back in the day with me. Street yeah, Tennessee. Well, their offense was struggling, so uh, Fulmer puts in Peyton. I'm thinking, oh, Peyton Manning's going to play great. But he hands off three times, and I and that's all we saw. And I'm like, hey, Fulmer, you're really going to put in your blue-chip quarterback to have him hand off three times, and you never saw him again. But See, by I think, six, seven games later, he's a starting quarterback. Yeah, I remember that vividly because that was my class, my high school class. People don't realize, like, back in the day, it was Street and Smith Magazine who geographically – uh, name what was called at the time blue chip all american yeah and that year i was on the west coast anthony iris i mean anthony alan iverson was the east coast blue chip all american the northwest i mean the north or the they called it the midwest was uh was uh what's my name uh the michigan qb uh henson no uh um, god damn i said it yesterday on the show and then the the south was peyton manning so it was Manning, Iverson, uh, the, the 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 North or the Midwest was uh God, Brian Greasy, Brian Greasy. Hmm. So really, yeah, that was the Columbus. Team. He went to Columbus, Miami. He was okay. I, I I'm surprised yeah. he made any All American teams. I'll be honest with you, he was okay. Yeah, and then because he went to Michigan, I think, or whatever. I don't know. Um, and then his daddy, you know, I mean, that's what it is. His nepotism at its finest. 